In terms of the big picture of human evolution, no one seriously doubts that ultimately the human line begins in Africa. If we go back beyond two million years, there are pre-human forms which seem to have evolved into humans. And then around two million years ago, some of the first humans, the species Homo erectus, come out of Africa and start to spread to other parts of the world. So that's the big picture. But when we narrow it down to our own species, Homo sapiens, the picture's become more complex as we've learned about Neanderthals and our interbreeding with Neanderthals, as we've learned about these people in the Far East called the Denisovans. And even when we had a common ancestor with the Neanderthals is no longer looking as straightforward as I used to think. So we've got a recent Homo sapiens skull there, the white one. Uh, we've got a Neanderthal there on next to it, opposite. And when we look at the end products of those evolutionary lines, we can see they're very distinct. So for Homo sapiens, we've got a high unrounded brain case. Um, we've got small brow ridges, a small face tucked under the brain case. Uh, we've got small teeth. We've got a chin on the lower jaw. If we could look inside the temporal bones at the sides, at the ear bones, we would see that they're distinct from those of Neanderthals. And if we turn to the Neanderthals as the end product of that line, we can see that they have their own distinctive features. Uh, a longer lower skull, big brow ridge over the eyes, the face pulled forwards, this great big nose dominating that face and the cheekbone swept back. If we had the jawbone, not much of a chin on that jawbone, relatively big front teeth. Um, and again, the ear bones distinct from those of Homo sapiens. So as those terminal members, we can see they're clearly different. But as we trace back in time, of course, we're approaching a time when they must have had a common ancestor. And geneticists estimate that that common ancestor lived maybe 600,000 years ago. Um, and if we look at the fossils and try and match that, uh, I used to believe, and some people still do believe, that a species called Homo heidelbergensis was the common ancestor of us and the Neanderthals. But there are problems with that now. So more work on heidelbergensis suggests that first of all, it has its own distinctive characteristics, which makes it less likely to be a common ancestor for the Neanderthals and us. And also, some of the Heidelbergensis fossils are simply too young to represent those ancestors. So this fossil, this is a replica of the fossil from uh, Broken Hill, Cabway in Zambia. And people used to think it was about 500,000 years old. We now know it's about 300,000 years old. And that means it's actually contemporary with members of the Neanderthal lineage. In fact, it's a bit younger than this one from the Cima de los Huesos at Atapuerca, which is probably 400,000 years old. And it's also about the same age as this fossil from Jebel Ehud in Morocco, which we think is about 300,000 years old and which many people, including me, put on the Homo sapiens lineage. So Heidelbergensis becomes a less likely ancestor and work I've been involved in with Chinese colleagues suggests that actually the lineage may go back even further, the separation may go back even further towards a million years. So if we move the common ancestor back towards a million years, we have fossils, for example, like this one from China, from Yorkshire, uh, that could be close to the common ancestor. Um, there are fossils in Europe, such as the Homo antecessor fossils from Spain, uh, and in Africa, there are fossils such as the ones from Buia uh, in Eritrea. So it's much more complicated now to say when was that common ancestor. And if we look along the Sapiens lineage, we also see there's lots of diversity. So it's not easy to sort of just make a cutoff point when we can say this is Homo sapiens. We can say that recent Homo sapiens is of course us, that's our species. This fossil from Israel, about 100,000 years old from Kafsay, I think that has uh, pretty well all of the Homo sapiens features. So I'm happy to call that Homo sapiens at 100,000 years. We've got this fossil, and this is only part of it, from Homo kibish in Ethiopia. It's around 200,000 years old. And the bits preserved show that the brain case is high and rounded. It's got a small brow ridge. We've got other parts represented. There's a chin on the lower jaw. There's a skeleton which is lightly built and has a narrow pelvis, which is another Homo sapiens feature. So I'd be happy to put that into Homo sapiens. But the trouble is, you know, at around the same date, as far as we can tell, at Homo kibish, there's this other fossil. 
Homo 2, it's called, Homo Kibish 2, and it's much less like recent Homo sapiens. Yes, it's got a small brow ridge. Yes, it's quite high, but it's got a strongly angled back like Heidelbergensis and some other more primitive humans. And overall, to me, that doesn't fit into the Homo sapiens category as well as these later ones. So you can see we've got a problem straight away. And with Jebel Ihud at around 300,000 years, Yes, the face looks like a bigger version of ours, so we'd say yes, that looks like Homo sapiens. Some of the teeth have Homo sapiens features. There are lower jaws with Homo sapiens features. But the shape of the brain case is long and low, like a Neanderthal, uh, like to some extent Heidelbergensis. So this is a more primitive brain case shape. So it brings to light the problems of looking at evolution along a lineage. These features don't all evolve at once. They evolve gradually. At times, there were populations that were separate, and they evolved separately for periods of time. Then when the climate improved, they spread out, contacted each other, exchanged genes and ideas, and mixed a bit. And potentially, in Africa, there were different populations around at the same time, showing different mixes of more primitive and more derived features, as we can see in these two specimens from Homo kibish. One looks much more sapiens-like at 200,000 years than the other one. It won't be a necessarily a simple story because of this more complex web of populations that eventually converged, if you like, to make what we call Homo sapiens today.